hello everyone and thank you for joining me on this video as usual i'm grateful for you being a subscriber and for giving me a thumbs up when the video is useful to you so in this video we're going to discover the top web-based molecular biology tools so i'm new to it and so if you have others that i don't mention please do so whether you're working on dna sequencing plasmid mapping or functional genomics these tools will save you time and boost your research efficiency. It's featuring Benchling, Snapgene, Genius, Ape, and more. So let's get into it. So just like there are molecular biology tools that are used in the laboratory, in the wet lab, there are digital or web-based tools that Pet, go along with it and it's important to start to get a feel for these as well because if you need to design plasmids for instance it's just so much easier if you're doing it on a tool like this these tools allow you to design and simulate molecular biology experiment on the computer which is termed as in silico why do we need these tools well biological information is stored in the form of dna so instead of the A, B, C, Ds up to Zs that we use when we're using a word processor, these ones, the structure of them is that it's stored in adenine, cytosines, thymines, and guanines. So alphabets can be viewed in Microsoft Word or equivalent processing word processors, but biological information requires dedicated software. They're often stored in formats like FASTA, the GenBack format, GFF, BED, PDB, which is like a protein data bank, the VSV, which are variant call formats. You may have heard of SAM and BAM, which are sequence alignment formats. Then you may have also heard of EMBO, which is a European Molecular Biology Laboratory format. There's GTF. Some of these I've never even heard of, but that's the range of formats you encounter. There's plenty more out there too. A common format that you may have seen or that you will see is the fast A format. So the fast A format actually can be opened with a text editor. So it's widely used for storing nucleotide or amino acid sequences. It typically has a header line that starts with the greater than, greater than symbol. Then this is followed by the sequence identifier and optionally a description. And then the sequence itself, either a nucleotide or a protein. So here's an example where you have the greater than symbol and then you have your sequence identifier and it's a human human hemoglobin subunit beta and um, homo sapiens and then below you've got the sequence itself which if you're looking at it and you're not familiar with it this is actually an amino acid or protein sequence rather than the nucleotide so if you downloaded a fast day format from say the National Center for Biotechnology Information, NCBI, it will look like this. This is a nucleotide format. And I've just got highlighted here, the start codon and the uh, stop codon in red. So that's the kind of look you will get with the FASTA format. Another common file type is the GenBank. So GenBank files are commonly used to store nucleotide sequences. But in just not just the sequence, you, this time you have annotations. So it, you, it would annotate features like genes, promoters, coding regions, etc. So there are multiple ways to open them and work with GenBank depending on your needs. The structure is that you will have a header, a header section with metadata such as the locus, the source, the definition. Then it, it will have a feature table which describes the genes, the coding regions, the coding sequences promoters and other annotations. And then it will have the sequence at the bottom. And as you can see on the screen, you have the locus, then you go ahead and you have all the additional information that will be encoded in this format. You can open a GenBank file in a text editor, but it's not going to be the most user-friendly way. Um, if you open it with a text editor, then you're gonna have to manually pick out those 
features that would have been annotated in the file. Since the fast A format, or if it's open with a text editor, or the Gen Bank, if it's open with a text editor, you don't really get the specialized annotations coming through. There are dedicated softwares and programs. So let me introduce you to SnapGene. So biological sequence analysis tools, these are specialized bioinformatics tools that can open and visualize GenBank files in a more intuitive way. So here are some common tools. So SnapGene is a popular DNA sequence visualization tool that supports GenBank files. It features a graphical view of the sequences, annotations, plasmid maps, and cloning simulations. If you're in SnapGene, you can go to, um, you can, once you open the SnapGene icon on your computer, you can go to file, open, and then select the GenBank file, which is like a .gb or .gbk file. Another of these specialized tools is Benchling. Benchling is a cloud-based platform where you can visualize, annotate, and edit DNA sequences, including those from GenBank files. So if you have Benchling, then you click on the icon to open it, then the platform will display the sequence annotations and provide editing tools. So if you go to Benchling, then you can go ahead and open it and go to file and then open your GenBank file on the Benchling workspace. And then the platform will display the sequence. It will display the annotations and provide you with editing tools. Benchling is free for academic use. Another well-known visualization tool for sequences is a plasmid editor so the plasmid editor is a free sequence editor it's designed for plasmid construction and manipulation it can read gen bank files and provide a graphical view so if you open the plasmid editor you can go to file open and then you select your gen bank file Another tool that's out there is Genius. Genius is a comprehensive bioinformatics tools for DNA, RNA, and protein sequence analysis. It supports a wide range of file formats, including GenBank. If you import the GenBank file into Genius, you'll be able to view it and analyze the sequence and its annotations. Another tool that you can check out is Unipro Eugene. This is a free open source cross platform bioinformatics software, and this can be used with Windows, Mac OS, and Linux. The Eugene supports a variety of sequence formats, including GenBank. And so once you have it open, you can go to File, Open, and then choose the GenBank file. So, the first of command line tools, if you're sophisticated that like that, is BioPython. BioPython is a powerful BioPython library for bioinformatics. It allows you to programmatically open, pass, and analyze GenBank files. So how to use it, you have to first install BioPython. There's a bit too much technology for me, but if you're that way inclined, and then you can use the Seq10 module to read a GenBank file. And here's the command. If you are interested, you can pause on the screen, take a screenshot, and you'll be able to use that command to uh, open your file. Another command line tool that can be used for sequence analysis is the European Molecular Biology Open Software Suite, MBOSS. So these ones include command line tools and you are able to use a tool like Secret within it to convert and visualize your GenBank sequences. The National Center for Biotechnology Information, NCBI, NCBI, also has a viewer, a genome data viewer. And so here it offers the, a web-based viewer that allows you to open and visualize GenBank files directly in your browser. So to use it, you go to NCBI Genome Data Viewer, you upload or paste the GenBank sequences, then you can view annotations, genes, and other features. At this point, when I had a look at it, it looks like it's only useful for eukaryotic genomes. 
um, but please let me know in the comments if it's also available for prokaryotes. Another online tool you can check out is DNA Features Viewer. This is a lightweight online tool uh, that is Python based. And so you have a Python based library that visualizes features of GenBank files. So how to use it? You can paste your GenBank data or load files from a website interface. How to use it? You paste your GenBank data or load files from a website interface. Of course, there are also proprietary formats. So for instance, SnapGene, if uh, the sequences from SnapGene has the .DNA, what's great is that the files are usually interchangeable, but there's some conversions that you have to do to be able to view one format on another platform or with another tool. Why these tools are handy is that you can think of plasmid DNA as Lego pieces where you can cut out and change sequences as well as introduce sequences. So in the next video, we're going to have a, a dive into plasmids and gene vectors and look at how we would work with such sequences using these online or digital tools. So once again, my name is Adjua. Thank you very much for checking out this video. 